Hey, savvy money explorers. Ready to embark on a mind-bending journey into the captivating universe of the psychology of money? Well, you're in for a treat because today, we're unpacking the secrets hidden in the pages of this remarkable book by Morgan Housel. Buckle up, because we're about to navigate the thrilling twists and turns of how our brains tick when it comes to cash, from irrational decisions to astonishing success stories. Whether you're a financial guru or just someone looking to decode the mysteries of money, this summary is your golden ticket to financial enlightenment. Expect jaw-dropping insights, real-life money tales, and actionable takeaways that will supercharge your financial IQ. So, don't hit that snooze button. Smash the subscribe, like, and share buttons, because we're diving deep into the psychology of money, and you won't want to miss a single nugget of wisdom. Get ready for a financial adventure like no other. Let's roll. Chapter 1 of The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel is titled, No One's Crazy. In this chapter, the author lays the foundation for understanding the intersection of psychology and finance. Chapter 1, No One's Crazy. In this opening chapter, Morgan Housel sets the stage for the book by addressing a fundamental concept, that people's financial decisions, even if they seem irrational to others, often make sense to the individuals making them. He argues that there is no universal definition of what's crazy in finance because financial choices are deeply influenced by personal experiences, emotions, and individual circumstances. The Rationality of Irrational Behavior Housel introduces the idea that human behavior in the realm of finance is often irrational, which means that it doesn't always align with traditional economic theories that assume people always act in their best interest. He emphasizes that this doesn't make people crazy, but rather showcases the complexity of financial decision-making. Understanding Financial Psychology The chapter explores the psychology behind money and financial choices, highlighting that these decisions are driven by a blend of emotions, biases, and unique life experiences. It touches on how individuals may take financial risks or avoid them based on their past experiences, fears, and aspirations. The Power of Personal Finance Stories Housel emphasizes the influence of personal finance stories and anecdotes. He explains that people often learn about money and make decisions based on stories they've heard from their families, friends, or society at large. These stories shape their financial beliefs and behaviors. In conclusion, Chapter 1 sets the tone for the book by inviting readers to embrace the complexity of financial psychology. It encourages us to refrain from labeling others' financial decisions as crazy and instead strive to understand the personal motivations and circumstances that drive those choices. By acknowledging the diverse and intricate factors that influence financial behavior, readers are better equipped to explore the fascinating world of money psychology explored in the subsequent chapters of the book. Chapter 2 of The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel is titled Luck and Risk. In this chapter, the author explores the concepts of luck and risk and how they intersect in the world of finance. Chapter 2, Luck and Risk In this chapter, Morgan Housel delves into the crucial roles that luck and risk play in our financial lives. He highlights how these two elements are often intertwined and shape our financial outcomes. Understanding Luck Housel begins by discussing luck and its significance in financial success. He acknowledges that luck plays a more substantial role in our lives than we tend to admit. This isn't just about winning the lottery, it's about the countless small and significant events that can either work for or against us. The Role of Risk The chapter also explores risk and its close connection to luck. Housel explains that risk isn't just about taking chances, it's about the uncertainty inherent in financial decisions. He discusses how people often underestimate the potential downsides of their choices. The Tale of Two Investors Housel illustrates the concepts of luck and risk by presenting the contrasting stories of two investors, one who experienced significant success through lucky timing and another who faced challenges despite careful planning. These stories showcase how different individuals can navigate the same financial landscape with vastly different outcomes due to factors beyond their control. The Impact on Decision-Making The chapter delves into how our perception of luck and risk influences our financial decisions. People tend to attribute their successes to skill and their failures to bad luck, a phenomenon known as the attribution error. Housel encourages readers to recognize this bias and take a more balanced view of their financial experiences. In conclusion, Chapter 2 underscores the importance of acknowledging the role of luck and risk in financial outcomes. It encourages readers to approach financial decisions with humility and a realistic understanding of the uncertainties that surround them. 
By recognizing the complex interplay between luck and risk, individuals can make more informed and prudent financial choices, appreciating that while they cannot control all aspects of their financial journey, they can navigate it with wisdom and resilience. Chapter 3 of The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel is titled, Never Enough. In this chapter, the author delves into the idea of enough and how our perceptions of wealth and contentment are often shaped by psychological factors. Chapter 3, Never Enough. In this chapter, Morgan Housel explores the concept of enough in the context of personal finance. He discusses how our understanding of what is enough is highly subjective and influenced by psychological factors. The Quest for More. Housel begins by examining the common human tendency to continually seek more wealth, even when we have already achieved a level of financial comfort. He explains that the pursuit of more can be a never-ending cycle, and this mindset often leads to stress, anxiety, and discontentment. The Role of Adaptation The chapter delves into the phenomenon of adaptation, which is our ability to quickly adjust to new circumstances and return to a baseline level of happiness. Housel highlights how this adaptation can impact our financial decisions. When we achieve a higher income or accumulate more wealth, we often adapt to this new standard of living, and what was once considered enough can shift. The Influence of Social Comparisons Housel also explores how social comparisons affect our perception of enough. We tend to gauge our financial success by comparing ourselves to others, often feeling pressured to keep up with peers who appear to have more. This can lead to a constant desire for more wealth, contentment and financial well-being. The chapter emphasizes the importance of finding contentment with one's financial situation. It suggests that financial well-being is not solely determined by the amount of wealth but by the alignment between our financial resources and our values and goals. In conclusion, Chapter 3 encourages readers to strike a balance between ambition and contentment in their financial lives. It prompts us to question whether continually pursuing more wealth is truly fulfilling or if finding contentment with what we have can lead to a more satisfying and financially secure life. This chapter serves as a reflection on our societal obsession with accumulating more and invites readers to contemplate what enough means to them personally, recognizing that true financial well-being may not always be found in the relentless pursuit of more wealth. Chapter 4 of The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel is titled The Seduction of Pessimism. In this chapter, the author explores the allure of pessimism and how it affects our financial decisions. Chapter 4, The Seduction of Pessimism In this chapter, Morgan Housel delves into the powerful influence that pessimism can have on our financial choices. He examines why people are often drawn to pessimistic views of the future and how these views impact their investment decisions. The Pessimism Bias Housel begins by discussing the pessimism bias, which is our natural inclination to pay more attention to negative news and anticipate worst-case scenarios. This bias often leads individuals to be overly cautious and hesitant when it comes to investing. Fear of loss. The chapter explores the fear of loss and how it can be a significant driver of pessimistic thinking. People often prioritize avoiding losses over seeking gains, which can result in missed investment opportunities. The appeal of pessimistic forecasts. Housel examines why pessimistic forecasts and financial doomsday scenarios are so appealing to the public. He suggests that these predictions can generate fear and uncertainty, making them more attention-grabbing and memorable. The Impact on Investment Behavior The chapter highlights how pessimism can influence investment behavior, causing individuals to hoard cash, avoid stock markets, and make decisions driven by fear rather than rational analysis. This fear-driven approach can hinder wealth-building opportunities. In conclusion, Chapter 4 encourages readers to strike a balance between realism and optimism in their financial decisions. While it's essential to acknowledge and prepare for potential risks, succumbing to unwarranted pessimism can prevent individuals from achieving their financial goals. Housel suggests that being aware of the seductive nature of pessimism and its potential to cloud judgment is the first step toward making more rational investment choices. By understanding the psychological factors at play, readers can approach financial decisions with a more balanced perspective, ultimately making choices that align with their long-term objectives and risk tolerance. Chapter 5 of The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel is titled The Getting of Wisdom. In this chapter, the author explores the concept of wisdom and its role in making sound financial decisions. Chapter 5 The Getting of Wisdom in this chapter, Morgan Housel delves into the importance of wisdom in the realm of personal finance. 
He argues that wisdom is often more valuable than intelligence or knowledge when it comes to making prudent financial choices. What is wisdom? Housel begins by defining wisdom as the ability to make sound judgments and decisions based on experience, knowledge, and a deep understanding of human behavior. Wisdom goes beyond mere intelligence and encompasses a broader perspective on life and the world. The Role of Time and Patience The chapter explores how wisdom is closely connected to time and patience. It suggests that wisdom often comes from learning through experience and making mistakes over time. Wise individuals recognize the value of patience in financial matters, such as long-term investing. Learning from mistakes. Housel emphasizes that making mistakes is a natural part of the learning process and can lead to greater wisdom. He shares stories of individuals who faced financial setbacks but ultimately used these experiences to make more informed decisions. The Power of Humility. The chapter also touches on the importance of humility in cultivating wisdom. Wise individuals are willing to acknowledge their limitations and seek advice or expertise when needed, whether it's in investing, financial planning, or other areas of life. In conclusion, Chapter 5 encourages readers to balance confidence and caution in their financial decisions. While confidence can be an asset, overconfidence can lead to costly mistakes. Wisdom involves recognizing when to be cautious, seek advice, and exercise patience in financial matters. Housel suggests that striving for wisdom, which comes with time and learning from both successes and failures, is a valuable approach to achieving financial well-being. It's not about having all the answers but about making thoughtful, informed decisions that align with one's values and long-term goals. Chapter 6 of The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel is titled When You'll Believe Anything. In this chapter, the author explores the influence of stories and narratives on our financial decisions. Chapter 6, When You'll Believe Anything. In this chapter, Morgan Housel delves into the powerful role that stories and narratives play in shaping our financial beliefs and behaviors. He examines why people are often willing to believe in financial tales and myths, even when they defy logic or evidence. The Persuasive Power of Stories. Housel begins by highlighting the extraordinary persuasive power of stories. Stories are not just entertaining, they are a fundamental way humans communicate, learn, and make sense of the world. Financial stories, whether about successful investors, market trends, or economic predictions, can be compelling and captivating. The Allure of Simplicity The chapter explores why simplistic narratives are particularly appealing. Housel suggests that people are drawn to stories that provide straightforward explanations for complex financial phenomena. These narratives simplify the world and offer a sense of understanding and control, even in the face of uncertainty. Confirmation Bias and Stories Housel discusses how confirmation bias, the tendency to seek out information that confirms our existing beliefs, can amplify the influence of financial stories. When individuals encounter stories that align with their preconceived notions, they are more likely to accept them as truth. The Impact on Investment Behavior the chapter highlights how financial stories can shape investment behavior. People often make decisions based on stories they've heard from friends, family, or the media, even when these stories may not be grounded in reality. This can lead to herd behavior and irrational investment choices. In conclusion, Chapter 6 encourages readers to approach financial stories with a critical and discerning mindset. While stories can be informative and engaging, they should not replace careful research, data analysis, and rational assessment of financial opportunities and risks. Housel suggests that understanding the seductive power of stories and narratives is essential for making more informed financial decisions. By recognizing the role of narratives in financial decision-making, readers can become more discerning consumers of financial information and avoid falling prey to misleading or overly simplistic stories. Chapter 7 of The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel is titled The Seduction of Pessimism. In this chapter, the author explores the allure of pessimism and its impact on our financial decisions. Chapter 7, The Seduction of Pessimism. In this chapter, Morgan Housel delves into the idea that pessimism can be seductive and how it often influences our financial choices. He examines why people are naturally drawn to pessimistic views of the future and how this mindset can affect their investment decisions. The Pessimism Bias. Housel starts by discussing the pessimism bias, which is the human tendency to pay more attention to negative news and anticipate worst-case scenarios. This bias can lead individuals to be overly cautious and hesitant when it comes to investing or taking financial risks. Fear of loss. 
The chapter explores the fear of loss and how it is closely linked to pessimistic thinking. People often prioritize avoiding losses over seeking gains, which can result in missed investment opportunities. The Allure of Pessimistic Forecasts Housel examines why pessimistic forecasts and predictions of financial doom often capture our attention and imagination. These pessimistic scenarios tend to generate fear and uncertainty, making them more compelling and memorable. The Impact on Investment Behavior The chapter underscores how pessimism can significantly influence investment behavior. It can cause individuals to hoard cash, avoid the stock market, or make decisions driven by fear rather than rational analysis. This fear-driven approach can hinder wealth-building opportunities. In conclusion, Chapter 7 encourages readers to find a balance between realism and optimism in their financial decisions. While it is essential to acknowledge and prepare for potential risks, succumbing to unwarranted pessimism can prevent individuals from achieving their financial goals. Housel suggests that being aware of the seductive nature of pessimism and its potential to cloud judgment is the first step toward making more rational investment choices. By understanding the psychological factors at play, readers can approach financial decisions with a more balanced perspective, ultimately making choices that align with their long-term objectives and risk tolerance. Chapter 8, The Role of Luck in Investing This chapter explores a fundamental but often underestimated factor in investment success, luck. It delves into the idea that while we like to attribute our financial gains to skill and our losses to bad luck, the reality is often more complex. The chapter dissects the role of chance and randomness in investment outcomes. Understanding the Impact of Luck The chapter starts by emphasizing that many factors in the world of finance are influenced by luck, such as timing the market or picking the right stock. It's like rolling a dice or drawing cards in a game of chance, sometimes you win, and sometimes you don't. Recognizing the role of luck can help investors have a more realistic perspective on their results. Differentiating between skill and luck it goes on to explain that distinguishing between skill and luck in investing can be challenging. Some investors may experience success due to good timing or favorable circumstances, but this doesn't necessarily mean they possess exceptional skill. The chapter encourages readers to be cautious about attributing too much to skill when luck might be a more significant factor. The Importance of Risk Management Moreover, the chapter touches on the importance of risk management. It highlights that while luck can play a role in investment outcomes, managing risk and making prudent financial decisions are factors within our control. It's akin to navigating a ship in stormy seas, you can't control the weather, luck, but you can control how you sail, your decisions. Long-term perspective. A key takeaway is that over the long term, luck tends to even out, and skill becomes a more significant determinant of success. It's like a marathon where short-term luck may play a role, but consistent effort and strategy are the keys to finishing strong. In sum, Chapter 8 underscores the importance of adopting a balanced perspective on investing, recognizing the role of luck, and focusing on factors you can control, such as risk management and long-term strategy. It encourages investors to avoid overconfidence, acknowledge the element of chance, and make informed decisions that align with their financial goals. Chapter 9 of The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel is titled Getting Wealthy vs. Staying Wealthy. In this chapter, the author explores the important distinction between accumulating wealth and preserving it over the long term. Chapter 9 Getting Wealthy vs. Staying Wealthy. In this chapter, Morgan Housel delves into a crucial aspect of personal finance that often goes overlooked the difference between accumulating wealth and maintaining it. He frames this difference as getting wealthy and staying wealthy. Getting Wealthy, The Accumulation Phase First, Housel discusses the getting wealthy phase. This is the period when individuals work hard, save diligently, invest wisely, and take calculated risks to accumulate wealth. It's like the uphill climb to the summit of a mountain. During this phase, people often focus on building their financial foundation, whether through career advancement, business ventures, or strategic investments. The Challenge of Getting Wealthy Housel highlights that getting wealthy is challenging and requires a significant amount of effort, discipline, and patience. It may involve taking on risks and learning from both successes and failures. People in this phase often have their eyes on specific financial goals, such as homeownership, retirement, or funding their children's education. Staying wealthy, the preservation phase. The chapter then shifts to the staying wealthy phase, which comes after accumulating a substantial amount of wealth. 
Once individuals have reached their financial goals, they face the challenge of preserving and growing their wealth over time. It's akin to reaching the mountain summit and then ensuring you stay there safely. The importance of staying wealthy. Housel emphasizes that staying wealthy can be just as challenging as getting wealthy. It involves protecting your assets, managing risk, and making thoughtful financial decisions to ensure that you don't lose what you've worked so hard to achieve. This phase often extends throughout retirement and beyond. Key Lessons for Readers Throughout the chapter, Housel provides valuable lessons and insights for readers. He encourages them to shift their mindset from solely focusing on accumulation to also prioritizing wealth preservation. This may involve diversifying investments, maintaining a frugal lifestyle, and having a well-thought-out estate plan. In conclusion, Chapter 9 underscores the importance of recognizing the dual phases of wealth management, getting wealthy and staying wealthy. It encourages readers to strike a balance between these phases, as both are essential for achieving long-term financial security and peace of mind. By understanding this distinction, readers can make more informed financial decisions and navigate the complexities of wealth throughout their lives. This chapter serves as a valuable reminder that building wealth is just one part of the financial journey, the real challenge lies in managing and preserving that wealth over time. Chapter 10 of The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel is titled, When You'll Believe Anything. In this chapter, the author explores the role of stories, narratives, and our willingness to believe in financial tales and myths. Chapter 10, When You'll Believe Anything. In this chapter, Morgan Housel delves into the intriguing aspect of how stories and narratives shape our financial decisions and perceptions of money. He discusses our inclination to believe in financial narratives, sometimes even against our better judgment. The Power of Stories Housel starts by highlighting the extraordinary power of stories. Human beings are natural storytellers and listeners. We use stories to make sense of the world around us, including the world of finance. Stories can be powerful tools for learning and understanding complex concepts. Financial Narratives and Myths The chapter explores how financial narratives and myths often gain traction, whether it's stories of overnight investment successes, get-rich-quick schemes, or the next big financial trend. These narratives can be captivating and persuasive, luring people into making financial decisions based on stories rather than sound financial principles. The Influence of Narrative Fallacy Housel introduces the concept of the narrative fallacy, which is our tendency to create stories to explain past events, even when those events may have been random or influenced by multiple factors. This fallacy can lead to hindsight bias, where we believe that we could have predicted outcomes after the fact, reinforcing the power of financial narratives. Behavioral Biases and Stories The chapter also explores how various behavioral biases, such as confirmation bias and availability bias, can make us more susceptible to believing in financial narratives that align with our preconceived beliefs or that are readily available in our environment. Balancing Stories and Facts Housel emphasizes the importance of balancing financial stories with cold, hard facts. While stories can be informative and engaging, they should not replace careful research and a rational assessment of financial opportunities and risks. In conclusion, Chapter 10 sheds light on the influence of stories and narratives in the world of finance. It encourages readers to be aware of the power of financial storytelling and to approach investment decisions with a critical and discerning mindset. By understanding the role of narratives in financial decision-making, readers can make more informed choices and avoid falling prey to misleading or overly optimistic financial tales. We've just scratched the surface of The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel, and I hope you're as mind-blown as I am by the incredible insights we've uncovered today. But remember, knowledge is power, and real change happens when you apply what you've learned. So, take those nuggets of wisdom and start making smarter money choices today. If you found this summary valuable, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with your friends, family, and fellow money enthusiasts, because together, we can all level up our financial game. And hey, if you want more fantastic book summaries, finance tips, and exciting insights, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and join our growing community of money explorers. We've got plenty more financial adventures ahead. You can grab your copy of The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel, the link is in the description box. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, remember, the power to master your money is in your hands. Keep learning, keep growing, and keep prospering. This is Jerry, signing off. Stay financially savvy, my friends.